19-year-old Dylan Rounds grew up in Idaho. From a young age he had a passion for farming. Often he would try to keep up with his dad and his grandfather. Dylan could drive a tractor by himself before most kids knew how to ride a bike. From as early as 10 years old he was growing pumpkin patches. Dylan dreamed of one day owning his own farm and in 2019 it would seem this dream would come true. In 2019 Dylan and his grandfather purchased a farm in Lucin, Utah. Dylan would frequently go back to Idaho to visit his parents but spent most nights living in his camper on the farm. He had a passion for the work and spent no time playing video games or on social media like many of us his age. Dylan was driven to make the farm a success. He spent the next two summers ripping out and redeveloping the ground on his own and his hard work paid off. His grain was finally coming through. He finally had a crop. Dylan couldn't be happier. It was now a fully functional farm. Dylan was last seen on May the 26, 2022, eating at the Saddle So Bar in Montello, Nevada. The town is about 30 minutes away from the family farm Dylan was working on in Utah, which is on the Utah-Nevada border. Rounds last spoke to his grandmother on May the 28th and told her he was moving the grain truck from his camper to his shed about five miles away because it had started to rain and he didn't want the seeds to be ruined. Candice Cooley, Dylan's mother who lives in Idaho, found out on May the 30th that nobody in the family had spoken to Rounds since then. I would go three or four days without talking to him and then I talked to him five days in a row she said but he was always in contact with somebody so when we all put together that nobody talked to him that's when we all headed down to the farm with no sign of Dylan at the farm his family filed a missing persons report with the police Upon searching the farm, police found Dylan's boots behind a pile of dirt a hundred yards from where his grain truck was parked. He was very particular about his boots. He wears a pair and it's always the same pair. When they wear out, he goes out and buys exactly the same boots. His camper was also searched. There was no wallet and no phone. The teen's truck also appeared to have been tampered with, appearing far too clean and put in four-wheel drive after Dylan had been complaining earlier that the feature wasn't working. Cooley said there were no tyre tracks in the dirt leading to or from Dylan's truck and the seat had been adjusted into such a position it would have been impossible for him to drive it. Cooley added that the key fob to his pickup was also missing and the truck was locked. Dylan never locks anything, she said. According to ABC4, there was a strange incident before Rounds disappeared. A blooded man asking him for a ride days before his disappearance. The man named Chase Vestre is a fugitive from Montana who is being held in jail on unrelated charges. Chase Vestre is also facing federal firearms charges in connection with the case. Authorities served a search warrant at his home prior to Round's disappearance and found two guns. Then, by listening to jailhouse phone calls after the teen went missing, police said they learned he had more weapons hidden with an associate. On the 7th of July, a person of interest was named in the disappearance of Rounds, 59-year-old James Brenner. Brenner is described in court documents as a neighbour and family friend of Rounds, who police say was squatting in a trailer on land where deputies found the missing teen's boots and grain truck. His past criminal history includes malicious wounding, malicious shooting and three prior convictions for being a felon in possession of a firearm. 
Brenner was convicted of shooting and seriously wounding another man at a campsite in Maryland in 1986 in a work-related dispute according to authorities there. He has numerous other convictions over the years and has served federal time. A search warrant had been executed at Brenner's trailer by the FBI on June the 16th. Officials say they found ammunition, ignition caps and black powder associated with muzzleloader firearms. According to a neighbour identified in court documents as D.H., at some point after Round's disappearance, Brenner asked him to conceal three black powder guns and a 22 caliber rifle without a serial number. After being contacted by the FBI, D.H. gave the weapons to authorities. Citing past felony convictions, they charged Brenner with being a felon in possession of a firearm. The Box Elder County Sheriff's Office in Utah has been the lead agency on the case, but Justin Rounds and Candice Cooley, Dylan's parents, believe mistakes have been made in the investigation, and they are frustrated by a lack of communication. Dylan's parents say they rarely hear from anyone in the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office, and were stunned when information the family was asked to keep quiet, was released on July the 28th on the National Missing and Unidentified Person System. It said after Dylan disappeared, his truck was locked and the key fob was missing. However, the key fob was brought back and placed in the residence by an unknown person. The information about the key fob has since been removed and Dylan's parents were told it was accidentally submitted. Rounds and Cooley say the day the key fob was found in Dylan's camp trailer, investigators didn't seem to care. Brenner also had an arrest warrant at the time Dylan disappeared. Box Elder County knew this. He could have been arrested on day one, Cooley explains. You have a violent criminal and you have a missing 19 year old, all within 100 yards of each other. And you don't even think, let's go ahead and execute this warrant because we can take this guy to jail right now. Furthermore, none of Dylan's immediate family were interviewed on a single occasion. Dylan's family is offering a $100,000 reward for information leading to the recovery, arrest and conviction of the person or persons responsible for his disappearance.